Well, we've finally done it. We've built a perfect empire in the stars. We can be proud of what we've done, and none can ever take our accomplishment away from this us. Is in fact, what? Representing Grandmaster. How did you get on my feet? Ruler of all dimensions. Rightful heir to the. Call home. Surrender. Well, this doesn't sound good. Fearless warriors. Conquest. Well, darn. It seems someone can take our accomplishments away from us. That's why this edition of the Interstellar Space Genesis Essentials series is dedicated to telling you all about combat technologies and ship design. At the start of the game, you'll be given two initial frigates to begin your exploration of the galaxy. Little more than scouts, these ships lack the firepower necessary to deal with even the most basic threats the galaxy has to offer. So if you want to have any chance of victory on the battlefield, you are going to need bigger and better ships. It is therefore imperative that you engage in technological research. Combat-related technologies can be found throughout the technology tree. We will cover these in more detail when we discuss ship design, but first we'll present an overview of what you can find. The Defenses Branch contains many structures designed to defend you from all manner of attacks. These include tactical space combat, space marine boarding, orbital bombardment, ground combat, and even espionage. In addition, the Defenses Branch contains numerous armor and shield upgrades as well as a missile defense system. The Weapons Branch includes numerous new types of beam, kinetic, and missile weapons for your starships. It also contains special systems such as fighter bays, bomber bays, orbital bombardment racks, and battle sensors, which can significantly improve the accuracy of your ships. The Propulsion Branch contains engine upgrades which improve the movement speed and defense of your ships. In addition, the scanner technologies and targeting algorithms found here can improve the accuracy of your ships. The Construction Branch contains a wide variety of special systems such as the Holodeck, Battle Pods, Heat Sink, Marine Pods, and Repair Bots. Once you have completed researching a few new combat-oriented technologies, you should consider designing a new ship. Each class of ship has a specific cost to build and a specific amount of free space available to it. The larger the ship class, the higher the cost and the more space it will have available. While larger ships are typically better, they do have less maneuverability and less ship defense than their smaller counterparts. This makes them easier to target. Until you have built a starbase, you will be unable to construct ship classes larger than destroyer. In order to build a Titan, you must have also unlocked the Titan construction technology from within the technology tree. Engines do not take any space on your ships unless you choose to increase your maneuverability level. The amount you can increase is dependent on your ship class. Titan-class ships cannot increase their maneuverability. Also, unlike all other ship modifications, your engines will be automatically upgraded across all your fleets whenever a new engine is researched. This does not require your ships to be refit. The armor utilized by your ships does not utilize any space, and the best armor you have researched is always equipped on your new designs. The armor and structural points provided are scaled based on the class of the ship. By clicking on the armor icon, you can increase your hull reinforcement level from light to medium to heavy. This will provide additional structural points. This will not use any additional space on your ship, but it will increase its production costs substantially. Shields do take space and can be swapped to a lower level model if desired. You can also adjust the angle of your shields. Reducing your shields below 360 degree protection will provide you with extra space. There are three main types of weapons in the game. These include beam, kinetic, and missile. You should generally focus your research efforts on one or two of these weapon types. As a general rule, beams are very accurate, even at long range, but pack less of a punch. Kinetic weapons conversely can hit very hard but are generally inaccurate, especially at range. Missiles are highly accurate, long range, and also hit very hard, but unlike other weapons, they have a travel time before their damage is done. They also come in a limited capacity and must deal with potential countermeasures such as point defense weapons and ECM. Regardless of what your weapon of choice is, you will add them in the weapons panel. If you'd like, you can remove any existing weapons by clicking on the trash can icon. When adding new weapons, you have the option to add them in a new slot or to simply click the plus sign to increase the quantity in an existing slot. To the right of the weapon, you will see a variety of weapon modifications. These can be enabled by clicking on them. They generally provide a unique ability to the weapon, for instance shield piercing, which bypasses shields entirely, or MERV missiles, which can quadruple their damage if they can avoid being destroyed in flight. Some modifications may be grayed out and unavailable to select. 
This is because these modifications first require a certain level of miniaturization be achieved. Weapon miniaturization occurs each time you unlock a higher level of weapons research. Miniaturization will build up to a maximum of four, and each level of miniaturization also reduces the size and cost of the impacted weapons. By clicking on the fire arc icon, you can change the potential firing angles of the weapon. Increasing the firing angles increases the cost and space used by the weapon. When using missile weapons, you will also see a new icon. This icon controls how many missiles will be available to each individual missile weapon in this slot. It also displays the HP of each missile. The higher the HP, the harder it is for the enemy's point defense weapons to shoot down. You can change the number of missiles available to each missile weapon in this slot by clicking on the icon. This will raise or lower the cost and space requirements accordingly. This does not increase their damage, but does allow you to fire more of them before running out. As you add and remove weapons, pay attention to their text description. Some weapons will indicate they have a special ability, an extended range, or suffer additional accuracy penalties compared to weapons in their class. The Wurzite Cannon, for instance, is a very high damage weapon for its level, but is very inaccurate and requires you get into close range and maintain a high ship attack value. Speaking of ship attack value, we should look at the ship attack and ship defense values of our ship. You may have noticed that while we adjusted the weapon loadout of our ship, the ship attack and defense value of our ship also changed. A ship's attack is compared to its target's ship defense each time a weapon is fired. In the case of multiple identical weapons being fired at once, for instance with our Wurzite Cannon here, each instance of the weapon in the slot is still individually compared. Having a high ship attack that exceeds your opponent's ship defense will generally lead to a higher chance to hit. Conversely, having a high ship defense that exceeds your opponent's ship attack will generally lead to a lower chance to hit. In order to have a high degree of accuracy, you will generally want your ship attack percentage to be no less than 50 percentage points lower than the target's ship defense. That brings us to special systems. Special systems are optional systems you can equip to your ships. These include things like fighter bays, bomber bays, bomb racks, marine pods, and battle sensors. While there are too many to cover here, I will highlight a few of them. Battle sensors are an important upgrade as they can supply a significant amount of ship attack to your designs. It is recommended to include them and research higher level scanning to increase their ship attack bonus, especially if using kinetic weapons. Fighters and bombers will both use the best armor you have available. Fighters will use the PD version of the highest damage weapon technology you have unlocked. They will even make use of special modifiers such as shield or armor piercing as long as you have achieved the required miniaturization level to equip that same mod on your ship. Bombers will use the highest damage missile variant you have unlocked. After designing a new ship, it will appear in the list of available constructions within your colonies. But remember, you must have an orbital station such as a starbase, battle station, or star fortress researched and built in your colony before you can build ships larger than a destroyer. Instead of building a new ship, you may want to refit an existing ship into your new design. To do this, the ship you would like to refit must be located in a system that has a colony with an orbital station. Open the colony view of the colony with the orbital station. You must now click on the small blue ship icon with a wrench. Note that hovering over the icon will tell you if you have any military ships in orbit that can be refit. Once clicked, the refit panel will open. You can now click on the ship you want to refit on the left side of the panel, and then click on the design you want it to be changed to on the right side. It will place this refit into your construction queue. It is important to note that while ships are scheduled for refit, they will not be in orbit and can't be moved or used to defend your system from attack. This means it is often wise to not try to refit your entire fleet at once. Great work! You now know how to build a ship capable of handling anything your opponents send your way. But remember, researching and designing your ships is just half the battle. You may consider returning to take our tactical combat course in the near future as well.